Hey guys, Richard Holder here. I'm here with Courtney, CAD company. We're out in New Mexico. Just got done with doing a bunch of dyno testing. Tested a blower motor, tested a high compression normal aspirated motor, tested my motor, which was a big drop in power. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit and let you know there are different pistons, there are different chamber sizes. There's a lot of confusion on which one you mix and match. So we're gonna to talk to the expert. He's gonna tell us exactly what you do. Courtney, what's going on? Well, there's two cylinder head sizes uh, uh, in the 472 and 500. There's the large chamber, it's just 120 cc. Uh, this is a stock piston here, it's got a dish. This is an eight and a quarter to one, 500. And then we, we have a forged nine to one piston. Any, any pretty much flat top gives you nine to one. Both of those work with the same CC chamber, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, then you move into the 76 CC. That's where it gets a little bit confusing. A lot of people think the 76 CC is, they, they call it the high compression head. Well, it, it can be either. It's all in the piston. This is this is a eight and a half to one. This would be in the 71 through 73, which makes the 76 cc a low compression head. So that would have been what the factory head, head, right? Right. Now this one here, with a dish, the factory dish for a 10 to one, uh, it looks like a peanut. It's pinched down in the middle, and uh, it'll give you a 10 to one. That was like you know 68 through 70 model. Uh, but they don't have valve relief. A lot of people think that there's a, because there's a dish in them, it's valve reliefs. It's not. Yeah. I mean, if you got big cam in that, it's just crash and burn. So the piston's not going to help you at all for, or, or the dish is not going to help you at all with piston to valve clearance. Well, right? not at all. I mean, it, I mean, some of it will clear, but usually the corners hit, and and you're limited on how much camshaft you can put without putting notches in that piston. Okay. And then the ten to one forwards we have, you know, of course it has has valve reliefs in it, so. Uh, that's that's the main difference. So let's talk about what happens when you try to mix and match like guys are talking about okay. with a like 76 we, CC chamber and a different piston. That's what we did on some of this dyno testing. We pretty much had a, had a piston like this with valve reliefs in it. So it dropped the compression comparable to that. We we're probably about nine and a half. But we put the small chamber heads on it and that gave us over 12 to one compression. So <clears throat> if you have a 74 through 76 engine or flat top pistons and you you happen to put 76 cc heads on it you better be up in your uh, octane rating <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it happens by accident some we get people calling on occasion they, they had their car into a shop it, it had cracked heads or whatever and they just grabbed a set of heads and put on it now it rattles like crazy because of that mistake. That's going to change it dramatically, now, and especially if they have a really small mild camshaft right. in there, right? And conversely, if you have these pistons and put a 120cc on it, you're going to be down to like 7 to 1, somewhere in that area. You're not going to have hardly any power. So sure. it's real important you match the piston to the head that you have. All right, now we've taken a look at the piston. Let's go check out the cylinder head. Okay, I'm here with Courtney. Now that we've taken a look at the pistons, we're gonna check out the cylinder heads. Courtney's gonna tell us a little bit about, you know, different size, different chamber size, and lots more. Let's check it out. All right, what do we got going on? This is the 120cc head, okay? Well, let's zoom in there, show them the chamber. 1974 through 1976. If you notice, you know, it's a huge, huge chamber. The valves set down you know, about a quarter inch lower than uh, than the small chamber heads. Okay. So, with this head, you shouldn't have any valve to piston clearance issues, even with a big cam. Because the valve drop is different than this it, head it's than way the, the small chamber. The valve's quarter inch shorter, and it sits away from the deck. So it's unshrouded now, then. Well, it's it, it's shrouded Compared about like the other, but it's sunk. It's away from the deck and the okay. piston. Okay. More. It's you can see it's set, setting way down in there. Yep. And if we go over to the 76. All right, let's take a look here. This is our 76 CC chamber. You can see how much closer the valve seat is to the deck. Yep. Okay, and when you put a larger valve in it, it puts it real close. Okay. So with 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 a real performance cam, uh, you need valve release. Um, you can get away with some of the smaller cams, but you get yeah. into the, the bigger stuff, you gotta have valve reliefs or where it's crash and burn. Do both the small chamber and the big chamber heads run the same size valve? From the factory, yes, yes. except for the length. Okay. The stem length. Okay, so they're particular to their valve length depending on which chamber size you have. Right. 
Right. Okay. This uh, this is a quarter inch longer. They're roughly five and a quarter inch. These are about five inch. Okay, so we've got a 76 cc chamber and we've got a 120 cc chamber, but there's one in the middle, right? Let's talk a little bit about right. that one. This is, this is <laughs> off the, the 425s. <clears throat> it's, it's kind of an oddball. Uh, the water passages are, are, are different than the, the 472 500. Now it's, <clears throat> the CCs is, is somewhere between the, the two. Okay. So a lot of guys uh, had, had put these heads on there, you know, they say it'll give you around 10 to 1. Uh, so as an intermediate with, between it, the two, it, right? Intermediate, but there's some some issues that can arise with, with water passages. If you if you look at this passage and this passage, this is a 500 gasket. Okay. And it, it puts it real close to the fire ring. And like, look look how close this one gets. Uh, so we got coolant passages right next to where this yeah, thing should be gets, sealing, gets, right? Yeah, it's real close. And I mean, we got some overhang, actually overhang here. So yeah, well, that's that's not a good idea. I say it doesn't match up yeah. real great. Some people have gotten away with it. I don't like taking a chance. And by the way, these 425 heads were the heads that were on the 500 Cadillac that I got from Freiburger, and they had run this with nitrous and stuff. Even though this is fairly close, they got away with it, but, you know, for how long? So we've got 76 EC, the 425 head, which can be in between. There's a couple of different sizes for the 425, right? No, they were all the same. All the same? What, what chamber were they? It's somewhere around 100 to 110. Okay. And then we've got the and then we've got the 120. So make sure to mix and match those with the right piston. And if you have any questions, make sure to call this guy. <laughs> he was saying that you guys have some uh, cool cam bearings that you have um, refill the slot of the holes so they get change the oiling on. Yeah, I'll make sure you put a hole in it. Okay, and that's usually at five or seven o'clock. So I mean, it's it's actually like in the worst place to get oil. So what we did, we put a groove around the outside and added another oil hole at the top. So you got oil coming in two locations and one of them's far more preferable than the than the bottom one. So does one side have more load than the other? Well, yeah, the, the cam, cam is sitting down on this side. Okay. So it's covering up that hole. Yeah. That's the way it comes from the factory. And you know how you got your, um, what do you call it, hydroscopic wedge? Yeah. Your oil has to come in and... and, uh, and uh, uh, the camshaft's going to ride on that wedge of oil. Yep. Well, it's hard to get a wedge of oil when you're pushing up at the cam when the valve the springs are pushing. from doing that? Yeah, yeah. So, so this makes it easier. Also, the it's got another thousandths clearance in it. Okay. And it, uh, uh, which which helps because uh, the cam bearing holes on the block were bored from both ends from the factory, so they don't always. Oh, or they misaligned. They're they're. A lot of times they're misaligned. So they don't go all the way through with one side? From the factory, they, they, they board it from two directions. Okay. And then they put a, a the cam bearing is like a bushing, and yeah. then they, and then they like honed or cut the whole works in a row. Okay. You see? Yeah. So this helps, um, you, you know, still you can find a, a block that's, that's misaligned. Yeah. You know, which we built a, inline cutter to straighten all that out if, oh, okay. if, whenever, if you find when, that if we find that okay we, we can cut them up and cool the and cadillac that, tricks and that's our cadco three baron courtney cadillac tricks hey guys i'm here with courtney he's going to tell me the super cool stuff that's different about the cadillac quadrajet compared to all the other lesser quadrajets courtney what do we got going on okay long about 75 and 6 cadillac added this this system to their carburetors here. You notice you got your normal power valve, you know, that lifts your metering rods up. They added another let, let me Let me zoom in there, Courtney. This other uh, metering rod here, okay? And it's controlled by, if I can get it out of here. All right. So there's only normally supposed to be one metering That's rod. That's what this one has two, right? Right. And, uh, you know, Chevrolet carburetors, a lot of them, you'll see this hump on the top. Yeah. But there's nothing underneath it. Uh, and if you remove so that, so that's false advertising. Well, <laughs> if you open it up, there's just a uh, plastic cup taking up the space in the bowl. But this unit here is like a aneroid bellows. It's for 
altitude compensating. So inside there, there's a bellows, right? Yes, yes. And and like I say, when you change altitude, kind of like a fuel injected car, they you know they change air fuel ratio and that. So the bellows expand and contract right. based on altitude, right? Right. Okay. This needle goes up and down, and of course this one this one here is is reliant on vacuum. Okay. You know? So but when they, that needle goes up and down, there's a passage inside right, here, right? You, you see that little jet down in there? Yeah. Okay. Zoom in there. And there's an uh, adjusting screw on top. And you have a, a limited amount of adjustment, but you can richen and lean them out a certain amount oh, just nice. by messing with this screw. But cool. to do that, you got to knock that little cap out. The fake cap on the other carburetors. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that's kind of a And what neat size water jet is this? This is a 800 CFM. Okay. And uh, so we're getting ready to run this on the motor, right? Right. We had to take the. It was running way lean previously when we, when we were testing. So. Um, so what'd you do to richen it up? I I uh, put four steps larger uh, jet in the primary. Okay. And so what what and jet was in there? Was a 70. And we went to a 74. Okay. And what uh, about metering rods? Metering rods. The, the primaries I left alone. Okay. And. Uh, let me see. I can find the, the rods we had in it. Did it uh, find some wafer thin ones. You see, see the two that the, the the fatter rod is what we had run in it. Yeah. Now we're putting a skinnier one, so it's gonna okay. It's gonna enrich in it. Yeah. And I raised the float level a little bit. Very cool. And then what are we gonna do to the fuel pressure? We're gonna raise it probably five pounds. Nice. Uh, quarter jet can seems to be able to take more fuel pressure than than the sissy hollies than, <laughs> well than the others i don't know if it's the where they put the fulcrum on the float okay. or what but it seems like you can get away with a lot a lot more all right well, i let's don't get, i don't suggest it on the street but if you're yeah but for the dyno up, for what we're doing well, sure. it should be nice anything all, goes right <laughs> all right let's get this thing back together get it up on the dyno find out how well it does okay okay guys what'd you think about our inside speed secrets for the cadillac Looking at the pistons, if you combine the right piston with the right cylinder head, you get about Strong. six to one compression. <laughs> if you combine another set, you get over 12 to one. So that's a pretty big spread. So Courtney had a lot of cool stuff. And judging by the comments I got on the other videos, there's still a lot of confusion on which head you combine with which piston and what compression you get. How about the cam bearings? I thought that was pretty cool. Now, <laughs> to reiterate, according to Courtney, there's no problem with the Cadillac oiling system. We didn't see any. We ran his motors way up there past 7,000 RPM. No problem with oiling, unlike some of the other big blocks that everybody likes to mention. But the Cadillac isn't one of them. If it has any problem, it's definitely the rockers. <laughs> if you put any kind of camshaft in it, put any kind of spring rate in them, the factory rockers definitely can have a problem. Now, what about that quadrajet? I thought that, that was really cool, and I and I included that in another video, but I wanted to re-include it here because a lot of guys didn't see it. I like that Q-Jet. It works well, especially for drivability, which is very important on a motor like this. I mean, we're making 500 foot-pounds of torque down to 2,000 RPM, so you're definitely going to be doing a lot of driving around on that thing, and the quadrajet works well, and he showed us some of the cool tricks. Altitude compensation in a Q-Jet. That's pretty cool. So we got pistons, we got chambers, <laughs> we got cam bearings, we got quadrajet. Did I leave anything out? Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.